get your Bibles, get your phones, whatever you have the Word of God on. We're going to get into our message on today. I thank you always for listening, tuning in to Children's Ministry. Thank you for watching. Hi to everyone that I don't get to see at church. And we're going to get into today. Today is... Palm Sunday. All right. So we like Palm Sunday. What is that? We celebrate. This is the time before Jesus was going to be crucified on the cross. So this is like a week before leading up to all of that. That's what's going on. So this is Palm Sunday. And this is the time that um, the people, uh, Jesus is triumphant entry, as they said, and they took the palm leaves and they was waving in at him as he was riding in on the donkey and they were praising him and worshiping him, saying hallelujah, and because he was coming in. But at the same time, we're going to learn about those same people who were singing Hosanna, Hosanna. They also began to say crucify him. So the ones who was praising him, then also was the one who was trying to condemn him. So we're going to get into our word on today. Father, we come just to thank you again for this day. We thank you, Father God, as the word that we will meditate upon during this time. We know that your Holy Spirit will lead God and direct us into all that we need to know in the truth, Father. We pray that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened by your word on today, Father, that we will grow more in you and understand your word more clearly. Thank you for revelational knowledge flowing through us and in us, God. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to get into our scripture on today. Turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 14. And then I'm going to go over your memory verse for this week. Your memory verse is in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. And it reads, He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. So this is talking about Jesus being obedient to God when he died just like he was a criminal or a thief, he died on the cross. And that is your memory verse for this week to meditate upon. And that is the topic of our message for this week, death on a cross. So we're talking about all the events leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection. So we're going to be just discussing that. Last week, we talked about what? We talked about uh, what Jesus, when he took his disciples into the upper room and how he washed their feet. We talked about when he said the one will betray him, the one who was dipping into the salsa and the queso with him at the same time. We know it's Judas was the one who betrayed, was going to betray him. And then we also talked about the first communion when Jesus had his disciples and that was the first communion that he gave unto them. So in this week, we're discussing the death on the cross when Jesus died on the cross. So in Mark chapter 14, I know you're there, right? We're going to get into our message on the day. So Jesus took three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. This is after they were in the upper room and after all day, they left there. And he went up onto Mount Olive and he took with him Peter, James, and John three of the disciples to go up on the Mount Olive to pray. So he knew what was going on. He was getting ready because it was time now for Judas to come to betray him. It was time for them to take him and do all these things, whip him, beat him, and do all these things and crucify him on the cross. So Jesus was going up just like as we do when we something is going on in our lives and we, we go to pray, right? Pray to God, our Father, because that's who helps us. That's our answer. That's our strength. So Jesus in the same way, because remember, we are following after him. So he did the same thing. He went up on the Mount Olive to pray to God and he asking the Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. I know, God, I need to do this, but, you know, if it's possible, can I not do this? But nevertheless, he said, it's not my will, but your will that will be done. So he says, whatever I'm going to do, your will, Father. And that's the thing we have to be doing. We have to always make sure that we're doing the Father's will. So Jesus came down from uh, up in the mountains praying. He had the three disciples there and he went to them saying like, because they were sleeping, they weren't watching. He was like, can't y'all just watch for an hour? He says, you know, 
temptations, things are coming. The flesh uh, is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He's like, you know, this thing that's coming towards me. He was like, Peter. Well, he said, Simon. He said, Simon, couldn't you just watch? Now, the other member, Peter, James, and John were there. But he said, Simon, couldn't you not watch just for a minute, just for an hour? Because this is coming upon me. I have this great thing. And I know that Peter, because Peter, you know, remember, Peter was the one walking on the water. Peter was the one that got revelation that who Jesus was, that God told that this is my son. This is the Messiah. This is the Christ. So I can know that Jesus was like, you know, of all people, Peter should know what is going to go on and what is going to happen, that he would be there, you know, praying while I'm praying and watching. But again, they were asleep. And so then Jesus says, OK, come on, because it's going to be time now that I'm going to be betrayed. So let's pick it up in verse number 43. Are you with me? All right. Verse 43, Mark chapter 14, verse number 43. And says immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a crowd of men with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests, the teachers of religious laws and the elders. The traitor Judas had given them a pre-arranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under God. So, he, so Judas done told the, the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees, he's like, the one you would know who Jesus is because I'm going to greet him with a kiss. And so let's think about that for a second. That is how normally Judas greeted Jesus because it wasn't uncommon for him to go up to Jesus normally on a regular day and kiss him. And that's how we greet. Much like we greet when we're at church or when we're greeting people, what do we normally do? Fake kids. Normally we give them a hug. That's normal what we do. And definitely myself, cause I am a hugger. So normally that's what we do. We greet people. So it's not uncommon for me or you or whomever as we greet people in service that we give them a hug. So this is something that Judas normally did. So it wasn't going to be out of order. So he knew that when he came to meet Jesus, that he was going to give him a kiss. So he let the people know, okay, this is the one because I'm going to give him a kiss. So Jesus asked him, we'll keep uh, reading. But one of the men with Jesus, oh, I'm sorry, let me back up. As soon as they arrived, okay, Jesus, what, Rabbi, he exclaimed and gave him a kiss. Then the others, I'm at 46, then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword, which was Peter, pulled out his sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. And Jesus asked him, am I some dangerous criminal, revolutionary, that you come here with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you daily. He was with the priests. He was with the Pharisees. He said, I was with you there. Why you didn't arrest me then? But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures said about me. He says, you had plenty of opportunities to, to get me, to arrest me, to do these things. He says, but this is happening the way it's happening is because the scriptures are now being fulfilled. Then all his disciples deserted him and ran away. They left. One young man following behind was clothed only in a long linen skirt. And when the mob tried to grab him, he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. So in this time, they're getting ready to have Jesus. So now they've captured him. And so they're bringing him before judges and before everyone, you know, trying to accuse him of being, you know, a criminal and doing something wrong, being blasphemy. So let's look over and I want to go to verse number, which one? Let's go to chapter 15. Flip over to Mark 15. So we'll pick up the rest of the story from there. So in verse number 15, chapter 15, fake kids, verse number one, it says very early in the morning, the leading priests, the elders and the teachers of the religious law, the entire council men um, went to discuss their next step. They bound Jesus, led him away and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. So they're bringing Jesus before Pilate because they want Pilate to denounce that, you know, he needs to 
be crucified or, or what they need to do. They, you know, he's doing wrong. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you have said it. Then the leading priests kept accusing him of many crimes. So all of the, the priests and the Sadducees, they're accusing Jesus of all of these things. And they're telling Pilate, this is what he's done. And he's doing this. And he's accused of that. So Pilate asked, aren't you going to answer them? So Jesus, we know he never said a word. They're saying he did this, he did that. And, you know, they're accusing him of all of these crimes. And he never said a word. He did not even have to defend himself because he knew that this had to happen. And this is the way that was set for it to happen. So he didn't even say a word. And now it was the governor's custom every year during this Passover celebration. That During this Passover, we talked about the celebration. So they said it was customary to let a criminal go. So they had these criminals who they were normally going to crucify. But during this time, they were free one or pardon one. So... This is what they're doing. So one of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, a revolutionary who had been murdering people. So Barabbas had been out killing people. So the crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release the prisoner as usual. So would you like me to? So Pilate says, you want me to release the king of Jews, Jesus, or who? Pilate asked, for he realized now that the leading priest had arrested Jesus. But in it. So he already knew that all of these things that the people the priests were saying about Jesus was wrong. So he did not want himself to be the one to say, okay, well, Jesus is going to be accused and Jesus is going to be charged with these charges. He did not want to do that. So he was like leaving it up to the people because he thinking, okay, these are the same people that's like, Hosanna, Hosanna, we love you, Jesus. He did not think they were going to turn. So he asked them, who do you want me to save? The king of Jews or you want me to do Barabbas? And who do you think they said? Barabbas. They said Barabbas. Let Barabbas go. Now Barabbas had been killing and murdering people, but they said, let him go. So then he asked, well, what you want me to do with Jesus? And they began to shout, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. The same people who were just praising him. They began, because of the leaders and the Sadducees, they began to say, crucify Jesus. And so they took Jesus. As we know, Maybe some of you have seen the story of the Passion of the Christ during this time and, and how they took Jesus around and they, you know, they scorched him and used the cat and nine tail and they would whip him. And that's why the scripture tells us by his stripes we're healed. And they did put the thorn, the crown of thorns upon his head. It was not a pretty picture. It was not something that was just easy like, oh, okay, I'm gonna die on the cross. No, Jesus went through all of these things just for us. And when they did, they put him on the cross and he stretched out his hands on the cross, nailed them to the cross. And he was on the cross. Everything became dark at one time. And Jesus called out to his father. He was like, Eli, Eli, God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Or why have you abandoned me? Because you know why he's feeling abandoned? Because he took upon all of our sins, all of those things that we did, not that he did anything. And this was his time that he was separated for the first time from the love from his father. And he knew this, that God could not look upon him at that time because he had the sins of the world upon him. And so that's why he was crying out, God, why are you forsaking me? Why are you abandoning me? Why are you leave me? But God had not, but it's because of the sins of the world that he was taken upon at that time, that he was taking those sins for you and me. And so at that time, he gave up the ghost. He hung his head, he gave his spirit up. They, it's not like they killed him, but he gave his spirit up. Because of what? Because of you and me. And he claimed the victory. And on next week, fake kids, we're going to continue with this story because of this Resurrection Sunday. And we're going to go further into this message. And as Jesus has died on the cross for you, died on the cross for me, took our sins, hallelujah. And we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Christ on next week. And every day, 
as we should because we remember what he did. It wasn't so easy what he did, but he said, nevertheless, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do my father's will. So faith kids, I know it was a lot this week. Don't forget your memory verse, Philippians 2 and verse 8, and I will see you next week. Have a great week. Bye.